kids. How's it going today? And today, everybody, this is John Jones. How are you doing today, John? Hi, everyone. Doing well. Coach, thanks for having me. John, it's so excited that you're here with us. Uh, kids, John is, uh, is I'm going to let John talk about, tell you about himself in a minute, but John used to be one of you guys. He used to be in, in the PE classes that I taught at one of the schools I taught before I was at Cypress Woods. But John, could you tell us your story? Absolutely, Coach. So uh, I, I was born and raised in Tampa. Uh, I, I was fortunate enough to be raised by two wonderful parents, very supportive. Um, they worked hard to provide my sister and I all of the opportunities um, that we would have in our youth. Um, went to private schools uh, in, in South Tampa um, for elementary and middle school. It was uh, St. Patrick's, which was a small co-ed school, maybe 300, 350 kids total. Um, and then from there, I went to Jesuit High School, which some of you may have heard of. It's an all-boys school here in, in the area. And um, <laughs> that was definitely a... a transition for me going from a co-ed school to an all-boys school and an all-boys school where I didn't really know too many of my classmates. A lot of my classmates were coming from different um, schools in the area where they had been with um, a collective group. So there were, there were already pockets of kids coming in together who knew each other. So that was definitely um, a transition for me to, to get used to. But um, uh, plowed through it, caught through it, and um, ended up going to college for a couple years um, away from home. I wanted to see what that experience was like and um, ended up finding my way back home to Tampa. So I graduated from USF with a degree in chemical engineering. And I don't want that to uh, scare anybody hearing that, but it, but it really just combines math and science concepts to um, help people in, in different ways. And I can give you tons of examples, but it's, um, it's been very rewarding. And my current uh, job is for a company that creates instruments that are used in laboratories to perform diagnostic tests or um, um, other, other metrics to ensure that the products they're creating are suitable for human consumption or suitable for shipment. Um, I have a, a wonderful wife, uh, a daughter, two and a half years old, and uh, a son on the way. So um, uh, a few kids of my own that are getting ready to, to jump into school and into um, PE. So it's, uh, it's a very exciting time in my life. I'm, I'm, I'm in a wonderful position right now. John, that's so great. So John, when you went away to school, what, what school did you go to? I went to uh, Florida State University in Tallahassee, um, kind of undecided on my major, but um, knew I wanted to do something that involved math and sciences. Uh, th those were really my strongest areas and areas that I was committed to learning more about. Now, going back, John, to your experience at Jesuit, um, I just want to tell you that uh, not, not the la last school year, not the one where we've just completed, but the one before that, 2018-19, uh, our, our theme in the PE in PE was the new kid. That was our theme for the whole year. And it was about somebody like yourself just coming in, not knowing a whole lot of people. And then, you know, spending a year thinking about what do we do about this? You know, how does that how does that kid operate and how do we operate with that kid? And so that was uh, that was something that that uh, that I think you can probably relate to. Uh, but, uh, John, uh, tell us what what kind of a, oh, we're, we're, what is the company you work for? It's a company called Integris. And their specific solutions are driven in the semiconductor industry. And so uh, if you're not familiar with what that term means, just think about your cell phone. Your cell phone is composed of um, many, many different boards, electronic boards inside of them. And so the company that I work for provides solutions to the end companies that end up making these boards that go into your phone so that your phone works. 
you are talking to some future uh, people that are going to follow your path, John. I, I'm certain of it. We've got at Cypress Woods some, some really, I mean, they are, they're, it's dizzying for me. I can't keep up with them. They're a lot smarter than I am, and they can think of these things and know about these things. So I'm really happy we're talking because I, I know some kids will be able to see themselves here uh, at some point in time because there are some kids that are going to do exactly what you're doing, and we need kids like that. We need people like that. We need good talent in, in your field. Is that right? Yeah, as, as many individuals that we can work moving into the uh, STEM field, science, technology, engineering, math, is, is going to help us because that's what the world is, is moving towards is solutions that require those skills. So the more that we can help drive you know, young kids um, towards some of those skill sets, I think, is, is vital. Awesome. So, John, uh, what kind of a kid were you? at age 9, 10, 11. Now, I kind of know because I was I was your teacher, but tell the kids um, tell the kids about yourself at that age. Sure. So I was an individual with a lot of energy and I was someone who loved sports. If you take a look back at at, at the history of our country in the mid 1990s, there were a lot of very exciting things going on. We had a World Cup that we hosted in 1994. We had an Olympics in 1996 that we hosted. We had a Women's World Cup that we hosted in 1990, oh, what was it, 1999. Um, and then at the same time, there was this uh, basketball player in Chicago named Michael Jordan who was doing some amazing things. So for me, someone with high energy who, was drawn to sports it was just a fantastic time to be a kid it was absolutely amazing at the same time I also enjoyed my other courses at school so I really liked math um, I liked English and so um, you know overall as, as a kid I I, um, I I, I don't have too many negative memories from that time in my life it was it was a wonderful time Beautiful. So, John, what do you remember about PE back at St. Pat's? Uh, I remember PE, P. you know, my world revolving around PE. <laughs> Anyways, I remember on Sunday night thinking, because we had a staggered schedule, so one week we would have PE twice a week, the other week we would have three times a week. So I remember thinking on Sunday nights, well, or, uh, is this a week that I have PE three times? Oh, oh, great. How exciting is that? And then the days that I actually had PE, I would um, I, I would just count the minutes in class until we were we were lining up to get ready to go. Um, as far as specific lessons, um, oh, it was a long time ago, coach, but but I definitely you know remember how much of an influence you had on me as a PE teacher and and I don't know if you recall specifically but you were my teacher for 10 consecutive years I do so at my time at St. Pat's you were the only teacher that I had every single year from the time I started until the time I graduated so PE um and my relationship with you is is very um special it's something that I think about with some frequency that's awesome, John. Thank you. Thank you for that. And uh, uh, you're a person that is embedded in my mind. And kids, um, well, I, what I will say uh, to you is that John was a really good soccer player, and uh, and he is left-footed, and he was known for his, uh, his ability to strike a soccer ball with his left foot with just an uncanny uh, skill level and power. Uh, and people knew John for a lot of reasons, but that was one of them because he had this particular weapon. But there's certainly a lot more to John than that. John, do you remember um, when we did the Olympics at St. Pat's? What do you remember about that? I, I remember that, and you, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I seem to remember that each grade was its own country. That's what so I remember. Not was it its own country, but we also had a, a specific color that was designated to that country. So we, we had, you know, a yellow shirt or a red shirt, depending on which country we were. 
and then we would participate in sort of field activities um, at different times during during that week or however long the period was. But um, I remember those activities were somewhat partitioned. So we would have, um, you know, fifth through eighth graders combined together and first through fourth graders combined together. Um, so I, I, I do remember that. Um, not in great detail, but, yeah. but it does ring a bell. Well, that's good. I, I, uh, that's one of my great um, uh, memories of, of St. Pat's. Well, there's so many. Uh, the kids, of course, being primary to that. So, so John, um, I know you've had a chance to look at the kids, the St. Pat's kids, on, on video doing their warm-up routines to music and, in part, some of the Focus on Achievement night. Um, could you give the kids your impression of that? Seeing those videos, I was incredibly jealous <laughs> that <laughs> that we didn't do that in PE back when I was in the PE. Um, music is something that relates to everyone, um, and you don't have to be a great athlete. You don't have to um, be able to move around like a ballerina. You just hear the sounds and you know, your body instinctively wants to react. Um, I noticed in the videos that you were able to combine some, some dance steps with some of the other aspects that PE tries to target, things like calisthenics, stretching, some yoga movements, core work, um, muscle development, legs, things like that. So I, I, I was completely Im impressed and, and, you know, it was, it was breathtaking. I, I absolutely loved it. Well, that's awesome, John. Thank you so much for that. And um, we, uh, yeah, we, we're we happy. We love it. And we uh, and we push on and we see what the following year is going to bring. But, John, uh, you have children now. You have a, a, <clears throat> a young daughter and a son on the way, as you said. When they go to school, what do you hope PE is going to be for them? So thinking back on it, PE for me was, was always an escape from the classroom, right? So in a classroom, you're typically sitting, there's not much physical movement involved in, in our typical classes. So first and foremost, PE allows us to get up and move around in the ways that, that we can't during other periods of school. Um, in this day and age, with the technology, we're blessed in the innovations that have come come through, but it also leaves us susceptible to a more sedentary lifestyle. So I really hope that PE motivates my kids to seek out activities um, that, that will utilize their, their body. And then the other aspect of PE is that it not only develops the body, but it also helps develop the mind so that the mind and the body can work together to maximize its, its potential. And um, I mean, the, the, the hope for, for my kids is that they will walk away, you know, when they're in their 20s and 30s and have the same kind of recollections about it that I do, that of, you know, joy and excitement and, um, just looking forward to it whenever, you know, it, they have the opportunity to experience it. That's, that's awesome. And, and, uh, and that sounds like a good blueprint, by the way. Uh, so John, um, some of the kids that are watching this are going to want to follow you into the field, into the STEM field. Others are going to want to become teachers, uh, coaches, or different kinds of leaders. They're young. Uh, and, uh, but what, what points of wisdom or thoughts do you want to uh, put out there for kids to think about at this age as they, that are especially ones that are going to become teachers and coaches? Can you give them anything to think about? Sure. So first of all, I, I, I would argue that, that teachers, coaches, and leaders, they all fall under the same umbrella. I mean, you can very easily have one person who exemplifies all of those and, and coach, I, I definitely think you're one of those people. Thank and you, the question is incredibly loaded, but I'll, I'll try and keep, keep it to a few different points. Um, 
first and foremost, try and seek out mentors, seek out people that you can learn from. Um, and it doesn't have to be someone older than you necessarily. It can be a classmate that maybe has a skill that you are interested in, or maybe someone a year older than you who has some academic skill set that you want to try and pick up on. So try and accumulate mentors, if, if at all possible. Uh, that's something that I've picked up on recently, uh, maybe a little bit later than I had wanted, but um, I would definitely, if I could go back and tell my younger self, um, accumulate mentors. Second, um, challenge yourself. So we have our teachers who give us homework assignments and tests and, and present challenges to us. But as we get a little bit older and we become a little bit more independent, we want to try and find ways to challenge ourselves. So is it, is it just enough to learn this concept or do I really want to master it so that a year from now I can recall it and use it again at will? Do I want to just be a member on the team or do I want to really be one of the leaders on the team? Um, so try and challenge yourself is number two. And then number three, which sort of goes with number two, it overlaps quite a bit, is um, learn to live with failure. We fail many, many times a day and don't even know it. Uh, some of the failures we do recognize, but we also succeed many, many times a day and don't know it. Some of them we do recognize. And I know that's very, very hard for a younger person to, to understand because we have this inherent fear of failure. But maybe the most important piece of advice I can give to the kids is, Guys, don't be afraid to try and don't be afraid to fail and understand that failing is part of the process. And so if we learn from those failures um, and appreciate the successes, um, we, we increase our chances at overall success in whatever it is we're trying to do. That's some great wisdom, John. Uh, one of the things that we listen to in class is uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's six rules of success. And one of those six rules is don't be afraid to fail. Um, the kids have heard that uh, from from uh, from uh, some really wise people, but the way you just explained it was beautiful. It was beautiful because, uh, and especially uh, the idea that they're failing many times and maybe they don't even know it, and they're succeeding many times and maybe they don't even know it. Sometimes we take our little successes for granted. We we don't really chalk them up as a win. We just really don't think about it is that is that would you would you agree with that yeah absolutely and uh, you know an example of of maybe a situation where we fail and don't realize it is think about walking and this might be a very complex example but think about walking and think about how your entire body is this biomechanical chain and so when you take a step you might be failing when you take that step and you don't even know it <laughs> That is, you know, that is such an interesting point. Wow. That is such an interesting point. You know, when I was in, uh, when I was uh, learning to become a PE teacher, we had a, <clears throat> we had a class called kinesiology and physiology. And that was the hardest class I've ever taken. And our final exam was one question. And it was, if I recall it correctly, describe all of the biomechanics involved in bowling. And that was it. And then you just had to think through every muscle of the body and how it had to work together in coordination with one another and yeah. all of that. I mean, I, I mean, you, you some, sometimes you just don't think about it. walking is a, is a phenomenal thing. It's yeah. just a, ph go ahead. No, and I was going to say, you know, piggybacking off of that, an example of, of a success is, you know, somebody drops a book on the ground and you reach down and pick it up and hand it to them. I mean, whether you whether you think it's a success or not, it is, in my mind, unquestionably a success. And so I gave an example of a failure that maybe we don't think about, but there are there are these small but but important successes as well. So John, we why would why do you why do you chalk up the handing the picking up of that book? Like what what are the success the successes that you feel are built into that uh, that act? 
Sure. So um, one of the, one of the first things that comes to mind is is selflessness. So when somebody as an example, drop something, it's very easy to just continue on with your own living in your own bubble in your own world. But when you can step outside of that and interact with the person next to you, um, you're doing something that's very selfless. So you're, you're going outside of yourself to do something for someone else. Um, and then, you know, secondarily, but related is, is kindness. You know, do we, do we want to, do positive things for others or, or do we not? And that's, that's a choice that we um, learn about over time. But as we get to a certain age, we have to consciously make those decisions or, or decide to not make those decisions. And um, now, yeah. sometimes uh, like uh, John, uh, this, this really, really great what you're saying. And <clears throat> We, uh, we focus on little things like that. It's the little things like that that really, and sometimes the, a little act can stick with somebody for years. You just don't know which little act will be that one. So just do them all, right? And just, just to make sure you cover your bases and, or do as many as you can. Yep, and just realize we're, we're not perfect. So you, you, might, you might miss a couple of them, um, but try and try and, try and learn from, from those mistakes or failures. And, and yeah, be, be, let's be nice to each other, people. That's beautiful. <laughs> so, hard. so, so true. John, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. Really appreciate it. Let's stay a little bit more in touch, you and me, okay? Um, 20, 20 odd years is, is too long, coach. All right, great. Thank <laughs> you, John. So much for having me. Take care.